All right, this is for your do-it-yourselfers out there. Uh, today, I've been working on this for a few days, but I figured I'd uh, set it up here and tear it apart. So, I've been looking online for a welding stinger, and the majority of them are brass with a thin copper plating. Even the high-end ones are just brass. And I was trying to find one that was all copper. I couldn't find one. They're all brass. And then the cheap ones are steel with a copper plating on it. So, being the kind of guy I am, I broke down and started going through my scrap pile. Now, I had a half inch round piece of copper, which I used for the bottom jaw, which is solid copper. It's not copper plated. So half inch bar, and as you see, it's sitting on an anvil, so I do blacksmithing. So I hammered that flat to a little over a quarter of an inch thick. And then I took two pieces of angle iron and welded them together. All right, I'll put the camera down level so we can get a better look. Now the back piece. You have to have something as an insulator so you don't get electrocuted while you're welding. So, so the insulator I chose to use was just a plastic tube. It's not a heat resistant tube. I will be changing that in the future, but I do have the set screw that holds it in on the back. The pin is copper, uh, brass, it's a brass bolt. Uh, quarter inch 20 brass bolt all right so the guts of it it's very simple used uh, quarter inch washers rubber washers for the spring the spring is 302 stainless steel quarter inch by one and three quarter 12 gauge uh, the handle was just an L bracket that I bent to shape and that's it. And then what's holding it on right there is another piece of quarter 20 all thread, two quarter 20 bolts on the side, and then welded it straight to the angle iron. And the angle iron, it's just two pieces of half inch angle iron welded together and ground it smooth. And the end fitting is a uh, 1.0 gauge, just in case. I just had a bunch of them laying around that, and I use two gauge wire now for welding. So if I ever decide to upgrade to a thicker wire, I can. Um, the spring is capable of holding 20 pounds, so it does take a lot of pressure to open it. So, but it opens very wide. If you can squeeze it hard enough, wide enough to hit a 530 second, if not wider. So it's capable to hold all size electrodes. Um, so that's really it. Uh, drill the hole through the bottom to hold the tube. And drill the hole in the bottom of the tube. And then just cut a slit so it slides over the spring. That's about it. That's really all there is to it. So two pieces of angle iron solid piece of copper, L bracket. The top piece here is another L bracket. I insulated the quarter 20 all thread inside. I don't know if you can see that. There's a piece of rubber wrapped around it. You don't wanna be popping this open and closed and it's sparking on you, which it shouldn't. It shouldn't be sparking unless you're getting both positive and negative uh, connected. So like when you go to strike your electrode, you don't want that to be sparking. Same with the spring. You don't want that not insulated. The, not all of them are uh, Hobart electrode holders. Some of them don't have insulators. It's just the spring. But if the spring is tight enough, it's not going to arc out on you. And again, the back, another brass quarter 20 bolt. With that bolt, though, I drilled a hole in the copper, tapped it, Put the bolt in, 
cut the top of the bolt off and then soldered it in place so it doesn't move. It's so I was able to put it on in through here without having the trouble of the bolt coming through in case I ever need to remove this. I made it so I can generally take it apart, but if I need to take it apart, I need to cut this bolt on either side and it'll come loose. I've seen a lot of people on here doing it with small uh, drill chucks and I don't know, I don't see that, that. I feel like that just takes too long. You have to open and close the chuck to put a rod in. No, like if you don't do much welding, like I'm no professional welder, but I also weld a lot more than the average just hobbyist welder. I am a blacksmith, so I do do welding more often than not. I weld just a, at least once a day, generally. So on my search for finding an electro holder that was solid copper, I could not find one. If anyone can find one, please put a link in the comments. I would like to know where I can get one. <laughs> so, for those who want to make an all copper one, it's an easy approach to do it. Two six inch pieces of half inch angle iron, an L bracket, a quarter by one and three quarter spring, 12 gauge, a couple quarter by 20 bolts and nuts and cable fittings cable lugs I don't know those are copper lugs that are nickel plated so those are pretty good but that's it you know, that's all there is to it oh and just a sneak peek for my next video come over here this is my new oil stove it's a Ford F-150 exhaust system. Up there, that's just temporary. I'm mainly just testing it out. But it's three chambers. A chamber down here, a chamber in the center, and then another chamber up top. It's just how the exhaust is designed. So if you do choose to make a, a wood stove or an oil stove, ooh, it's smoky. You're gonna have to remember that there's fiberglass in the bottom and open with a tube coming to the side, and the same with this one, tube coming to the side. So that's my next video. Have it hooked up to the oil. Dun dun, oil. All right, cool. So yeah, that's my electrode holder. Um, any other questions or whatever on as to where to get copper maybe, or even the springs, uh, just ask, happy to help. All right, catch you later.